All right. Welcome. Welcome to the Well-Centered Woman podcast. Lindy, how are you doing today? You know, I am so good. I've been looking forward to this conversation since we planned it a few weeks ago and then we had to reschedule. So I've been looking forward to this. I'm just so blessed to be here and I've listened to your podcast and you do such a great job. I feel like I'm in good hands. (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm glad you are confident and praise God that you believe you're in good hands because we are going to get into some pretty meaty topics. And, you know, I love your whole testimony. Um, delighted to have this conversation, you know, learning about you. You know, I do my little homework. <laughs> Oh, let's see what she said. <laughs> well, you know, just so many different things. I mean, you love coffee, cattle, sheep, goats. <laughs> All kinds of stuff you, I you, learned about you. Looked you. At my, you looked at my website. You're the person that read it all. Mm, I know everything. <laughs> Let me stop. No, I don't. But so, yeah, I may, if we have time, I may ask you a little bit about that. But I wanted to get started on this one thing. I saw one paragraph on your website. And you know, I just got to ask, and I'll read it here. A challenging season from 2006 through 13 brought me to my knees. What started as desperate prayers became a close relationship with Jesus. I fell in love with talking, praying to him daily and reading his word, the Bible, and was changed forever. That's a seven year season. And so we want to know what brought you to your knees, whatever you're comfortable sharing and what was going on in your head during this. This is a seven year time where you said you were brought to your knees. Can you share with us? I absolutely can. Now, part of the story is, is family members. So I can't share exactly the specifics, but we were under significant attack. Um, One of our children were struggling. Our marriage was struggling. It was just a very hard season. A friend of mine had handed me a book, um, Power of Praying, a wife and power praying parent. And I, I said my Sunday school prayers. I, you know, I prayed, I was faithful in that, but those two books by Stormy, I never, oh, say that. thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Just really spoke to me. Every prayer I read, it was like, yes, I want that for my husband. Yes. I want that for my kids. Yes. I want that. Yes. I want that. Yes. I want that. And it became a way that I could have some kind of control over the situation, just putting mm-hmm. it in the Lord's hands. I think I missed, and I don't want to put this on anyone. This is my journey. Um, but I didn't miss more than probably four days in those whole years. And I remember waking up early in the morning and thinking, no enemy, no Satan, you're not, you're not getting this family. And that's what got me out of bed. And that's what um, really changed my life. I started seeing my girls were little, my boys were big, and I started seeing change in the little ones first. You know, you throw them in because you want that too. You want, you know, you want these blessings for all of them. And I started seeing seeing things being uh, changed in my little kid's life. I didn't even know needed to be. And um, which just the snowball just started. I was like, God is real and God is good. And um, I'm just so grateful for all those prayers. The books fell apart. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, all, all the things I can go back and, and we are all so much better now and so good. And it's just led into a lot of other, other avenues of uh, ministering to women and my family and praying for other people. So it really started me on this journey of being a prayer warrior and I was just fighting for my family, uh, but yeah. God is so good. And it, and when you see his power at work, it makes you passionate about the promises of the Bible about the promises of the Bible. Yes. And I love how you said that you transitioned. Like I prayed, I did my Sunday school prayers, but when you got into a real season where you had got desperate, so somehow you transitioned from our little Sunday school dry prayer and you must have got real and guttural. Like we're talking like stank face, like (laughs) crying. Well, I'll tell you what, Stormy's book really taught me how to pray scripture. Every yeah. one of those prayers in her book has scripture and there's power in God's word, not mm-hmm. just to transform your life. But when we pray God's word, it re- it's like a, I heard one minister say, this is not, this is not um, original. I heard one pastor say, it's like a double, a double punch in Satan's face, prayer for one. And then God's scripture for another one. And um, whoops, 
there we go. Um, it's just a double punch in a space when we pray scripture. So, um, so that's what she taught me to do. And I'm so I'm forever grateful for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the recurring themes, you know, in listening to you talk, and in, you know, just learning about you is this overcoming fear overcoming fear. And I was looking at one of your videos where you were talking about Psalm 91 and really, really mm -hmm. sitting your soul in that scripture. And you know, that fear demon is a real big stinking hairy old demon. Mm -hmm. And I saw that you had a group coaching program that you have called the Fear Busters for fear filled moms. Let me just yeah. be honest and raise my hand. I raised my hand as a single mom with African American young men. That is a, a real place, the fear of accidents, the fear of how they're going to make it in life, or the, the consequences of any poor decisions that they may make that will have lifelong consequences. My own parenting mistakes, what we talked about earlier. So obviously you had to bust down some fears as a mom and as a woman. So can you share as you're led to any Absolutely. part like where you were really scary as a mom and how you partner with the Holy Spirit to overcome that fear. I mean, something got you to do a fear busters. Oh, it <laughs> did. It did. I tell you what, and that journey really even started before my prayer uh, journey. I was a stay at home mom for five years when my, when my youngest were, mm -hmm. were babies. And, um, I don't know what triggered it, but I started to be, um, have many fears. I was, a. Uh, um, had social anxiety and no one knew this See, and, and some of my friends and family that hear this, they, they didn't know I was struggling with this, but I was afraid of what I dressed to go to the, to the, um, doctors. When I took the girls to the doctors, how I looked, I was afraid we live out in the country and there's a big canal that we have to drive down. And I would think, what if, and it's the, what ifs, isn't that what the enemy does? What mm -hmm. if this happens? Like, what if, um, my car goes off into the ditch? How am I going to get two babies out of here? What if this, what if that, I, I just was fearful and I watched a sermon on Psalm 91 mm -hmm. and they said, memorize Psalm 91. And I didn't know the spiritual principle behind it at the time. And now I know what it does in your brain. I know the science behind it now and the spiritual ramifications. Then all I knew is I was afraid something was going to happen to my kids. I was afraid to do a lot of things. So you had so social I mean, anxiety. What other, I mean, were you afraid of? people please and perfect i mean what did what all kind of fears were running around in your head because see what someone else no, is going to listen i've always yeah. been such a i've always been such an outgoing person um i was in sports in high school i was a leader i was so i still showed those qualities to the world but in the back of my mind it was almost like a cloud over me uh, for instance we go camping every year um up in the mountains and it's about four hours to a doctor if someone was to get hurt so i would start thinking it was more thoughts what's going to happen if something happens to one of the kids how are we going to get them out of the canyon and some of that is healthy you know like planning but it kind of went a step further so what i did what i did is when that minister said um, memorize Psalm 91. My brain was a little younger then, and it was easier to <laughs> memorize, but I memorized Psalm 91. And every time a fearful thought came up about my kids or talking to someone, I would start saying it over and over in my mind. If I didn't quite have it memorized, read it again. And I would say it and, and it got less and less that I had to say it. And then one day, uh, we, my husband and I and my brother and sister-in-law were getting ready to take a walk when we were camping and we were crossing the creek. And right when I said the part in Psalms 91 where it says the Lord will lift you up in the hands of his angels and not even your foot will strike a stone. My foot hit a, a stone in the creek like a stepping stone and my fear was gone. That fear I experienced, it was gone. It was over. I trusted God. And here's what I know now happened. I trusted God's promises more than I trusted any fear that could happen. And uh, that carried me through when I was, when I started my, my prayer season. But let me tell you, as we know, uh, the Bible says, renew your mind. And it is a daily renewing. Mm. There's still times where some of that little fear, uh, you know, now I'm an empty nester. I don't see my kids. I, and in the last three years, I've had three weddings. And so now I have three other kids to think about. Think about. We'll say and think about. Potential great grandbabies coming along. 
oh we're we're hoping soon but we don't know <laughs> no yeah so so it's a you know it's a process that i just keep renewing my mind and if i feel any anxiety or fear i still will say um you know verses of psalm 91 but it's not really a fight it's more of a reminder now that That's god so is good. good and he has us yeah so yes, um my yeah. fear buster program i'm i'm really I haven't got it started yet i'm going to take a group of ladies and and test it first and see what's helpful and what's not. And then I'll open it up full scale um, really soon. But I just hope to, to help women know they don't have to. And what, for one thing, they don't have to suffer alone. When we share mm. our fears with each other, the burden is so much lighter. That is so true because when it's exposed to the light, when the fear is exposed to the, mm -hmm. to the light, mm -hmm. it dissipates. It's like shame, shame thrives in secrecy, mm -hmm. fear does too. Mm -hmm fear does too and i like what you said in terms of it's a constant mind renewal it's not a one and done thing like mm -hmm. you establish that victory it's like it sort of got settled in your soul the moment you stepped on that stomp stone but as the vicissitudes of life came you still had to continue to renew your mind and i think that's where i have fallen off the wagon and to mm -hmm. someone listening here we it's like you gotta keep renewing your mind you just can't think you got it you can't. No. It's it's no. a constant, constant process. Can you speak more into that, like that process? Well, I can. Um, I, I'm a Bible teacher. I teach middle school Bible now. I, I taught elementary for 24 years and transitioned last year into uh, middle school Bible. So I'm really in the Word four hours a day with with the kids, um, because I teach you know several classes of Bible. But my practice is to get up early and I still pray for my family, pray for other people. I read the word daily. That's that's my daily habit. Um, and I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I, maybe two weeks ago, my husband likes to stay up late. And if I stay up late, I can't get up really early, but I was having fun, you know, with him and we did this and did that. And so I missed my daily devotional for about a week. And Ooh. I was, and, and you know, I prayed on the way to school. If a thought came to my mind, I'd pray for my kids. But I didn't have that quality time in the Word and that quality time praying and journaling. I journal a lot, talking to the Lord. And um, I tell you what, I don't even, I don't even remember what triggered it now. But I had a meltdown, and wow. I was worried about one of the kids, and I knew I was being unreasonable. But I, it just showed me. We sometimes when we're in the word and the prayer faithfully, we take for granted how much the Holy Spirit really is holding us up and really is directing our steps because we're so used to it. But, mm. but taking long enough, it, it overcame. And I just I'm like, oh, boy, this is I, I've got to get back in the word. So for me, that's what happens. Um, yeah, that's powerful. We take for granted how much the Holy Spirit is really holding holding us together. And that brief season of going about a week, you, you, you begin to fall apart. I oh, really my, did. my, 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 you're not the only one. You're not the only one. And we can't get by off a few drop rags in a car and a scripture once a blue moon. We, <laughs> but, but I'd like to say, and, and I, I, I'm not going to say this is unfair, but there is a <laughs> principle here. A baby can get by all day with a few glasses of milk, right? And mm -hmm. a day, but when you're used to having big meals, come on now, you go without a meal and you are hungry. So mm -hmm. I'm many big meals of the word, hangry. <laughs> yeah, it's like fear, fear. I wish I could do fear and hungry, but I don't know how that would work. But but yeah, I'm used to eating big meals of scripture, and so so to keep me sustained. I need big meals. And, and I, I, I suspect that that is true. Um, I, I haven't heard anyone else say that. So I like to have godly, godly backup there. But, but for me, I think that that is true to some extent, you know, I can still minister to people. I still know the word. It's still in my heart. And there are some things that have changed in me that'll never be reversed. I mean, there's fruit. Uh, there's a transformation God has done in my life that would never be reversed if I never read another, another piece of scripture. But just like, um, you know, just like Paul said, there's a thorn in my side that I've, I've asked to, to come out and God hasn't. And I think that's true for all of us. And to be able to mm. deal with whatever your thorn is, it takes that constant 
um, scripture reading to uh, just to rely on God. And I think he allows those those burdens so that we do rely on him. Yeah, so that we're always dependent on him and not our own natural strength. Exactly. So exactly. good. Oh, my God. And it's a big difference between you being prepared to know the word, to get up and teach it every day. There's a difference between teaching it to kids and then your personal application and your daily walk to regulate your mind, your heart, and your emotions. So in other words, you were getting up every day for a week going to teach the Bible, but you weren't having your quiet time. That's a big deal. Oh, my good God. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, I'll tell you another season I went through. And I, and I, I learned what happened after the fact. And that was through, a, a heard a preacher preaching to preachers, uh, for a couple of years, I was, um, making the videos as you, as you mentioned on Facebook, which I'm getting ready to ramp back up. But, um, all of my quiet time, I would hear some, I would read some, Oh, that'd be a great video. And I'd write it down. Oh, that. And, and I was studying to share, studying to share, and it was deep and it was good, but I got really depleted and worn out. And uh, I heard a preacher preaching to preachers that said, when was the last time you did a devotional just for yourself? Not to hear so you could fill someone else up. And the Lord showed me, you have to be filled up. And then you give, you give out in the overflow. Not the first you let yourself get filled up and then the overflow. So I've really, and I'm going to, as I, as I ramp up doing videos and sharing, um, sharing with mamas that I want to help them. Um, I'm going to be careful of that. Have a study that is totally not what I'm sharing on social media because, um, I want to stay fresh for, for the women I'm serving. That is so, so good. And you know, my take on that is I want to sit in it for myself that my interpretation, how it comes through for me is like, God, I want to sit in this for myself before I go flapping my gums to tell somebody else. That's how it looks to me. Like, don't you get out here and teach something that you heard. It's like, oh, that's hot. That's fresh. Oh, yeah. Mm, that's so good. And then you haven't sat with it in, with your own self and your own soul long enough for it to work in your own soul, but you're going to run your mouth and try to tell and teach and tell and talk. And I got burnt from that. Girl, you teaching and telling something you haven't lived out really good. You're still tripping. When, when you were talking, I thought of this. Okay, so we, we pick up fruit, right? And oh, look at this. This fruit is so good. This fruit is so good. Here, have the fruit. God says, no, you take that fruit and you eat it. You eat it. <laughs> isn't that good i never thought of that before god said no sister you eat it it needs it's for you to be transformed come on we're so busy trying to pick fruit and hand it to other people and we're sitting there starving ourselves exactly (laughs) let me stop (laughs) oh that's good now let's let me think about this so you started your first prayer circle in 2015 right Mm -hmm. and then you got bold you got bold and big and you started the lindy's prayer tips facebook page and i'm sure that was a pretty big leap to put yourself out there and start doing videos i could just imagine how that felt and then now you're out here starting a whole entire coaching business so my question to you is and no how long have you been married 27 years 27 years okay so what advice would you give a married woman that's called to serve in ministry and business and all of this stuff, but maybe your you know, spouse isn't a hundred percent on board or he's a little bit supportive or he might not be saved, that whole unequal yo, I know Stormy or Martian had mm-hmm. prayers for that, or maybe not even at the same level of spiritual maturity and mm-hmm. excitement. How would you navigate you a woman comes into your group and she's like, My husband, blah blah, what would you say? <clears throat> well, I think you, I think you could guess number one, I'd say pray for him, <laughs> pray for him and, and pray for him. I have a lot to say on this, but pray for him unselfish prayers because, you know, we can pray that he becomes the man we want him to become, but we need to pray. He becomes the man God wants him to become. And so that that's that you got to check your heart on that a little bit. There's a fine line there. I, <clears throat> um, I would also just dig in deeper to the word. And um, if she knows that she knows that she knows God is asking her to serve in a certain area, mm-hmm. um, you know, her, her husband is the head of, of the head of her, 
And so she does need to discuss it with them and, and prayerfully ask, not permission, but you do want to be on the same, on the same road. And if you know God's called you and, he's get, and your husband's giving you the green light, expect a little bit of pushback, a little bit of grumbling mm. because they're used to the way things are, whether it's a meal here or their time there because they love you. A lot of reassurance. I love you more. Those types of things um, serve him even more as you're serving other people, because that's, that's vulnerable for them too, as you're putting yourself out there. And, and, but if you know that God's called you stick with it, don't let his grumbling cause you to quit. Um, we experienced that, that a little bit, you know, my husband just wasn't used to being me gone on Monday nights when I had my, my women's group. And, oh, I forgot. And, and he did forget. And he was disappointed. I wasn't going to be home but he wasn't upset that I wasn't going to be home. And there is a difference. There is a difference. And it took me a little while to remember that. And it wasn't an attack on me. He just, he just likes his, his woman home, yeah, but he wasn't mad at me. And then after a while he would say, we'd meet someone and he'd say, oh, she'd be good. For Lindy has a group. And I, oh, I'd be so embarrassed. <laughs> but he was proud of me. He was proud of me. That's so good. And so, and he's very supportive now. And so, um, yeah, and I and I would have to to lean into their particular situation to give you know wiser counsel, but if if you know you just uh, pray about it and talk to your husband at a good time, there's all kinds of times that are good to talk about stuff too. So. Yeah, yeah, and I know that can be a real significant issue. You gave some really really great tips, and that first one you gave about really praying unselfish prayers. Oh my God making sure we're praying that he's the man God wants him to be, not what we got in our heart to fulfill our little fleshly, like God, make him change him, God. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that <laughs> One of my prayer partners, I just love her to death. I won't say who she is, but one of my prayer partners, she says, I just tell God, God, I know vengeance is the Lord, so you take care of him. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, there is some wisdom to that, but I have to say I've, over the years of, as we have prayed more, um, we have seen significant um, changes in our husband and our relationships with our husband. And so I will have to say that another passion of mine is not just praying, but praying in a community. Now um, we did start a prayer group of just five of us. And um, there's a reason why the word says iron sharpens iron and and, and not to neglect meeting together. And that's not on church on Sunday, although that's important. It's in a small, intimate group because my faith grew with these ladies pouring into me and not always just telling me you're awesome. Have you thought about this? You know, you're not, are you doing this? And, and so I think that is so important. And I, I would love and I will have um, some programs in this next year where I teach women how to lead a prayer group, how to start a prayer group. I know the ins and outs and, and it takes some work and, and it takes some bravery. Yeah. 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 That was going to be my Because the enemy doesn't question. want you to meet. No. The enemy doesn't want women to get together and meet because there is power. When we pray together, there is power and it, it just needs to be done. I could go on and on about the prayers that have been answered for our kids, for our husbands and other people. It's just beautiful. I love um, that. I love And that. I just want other women to feel that because we can be so lonely, can't we? We can be so lonely. So and, good. Uh, we bond when we pray with each other. There, there's so much power in prayer. And I believe it's Proverbs 15, 22, in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Mm -hmm. and, oh, yes. and when you have a, a group of women coming together, common, commonly praying and covering each other and sharpening each other and not in isolation, because see, the enemy tends to whisper more and whispers a bunch of trash and mess mm -hmm. when you're by yourself, all up in your head. But when you get around other women and you express that and you're in community, that changes and shifts the whole dynamic. So I love what you're doing. So true. And that was going to let lead more into my next question, <clears throat> which gets into more of the leadership and business. So let me ask you this. You have this passion to start like prayer circles and lead prayer groups and everything like that. What what do you feel like is the hardest part about leading women into transformation in small group settings from that leadership perspective? The real raw truth, because it's not all pretty, because I've done it too. 
I, I think the hardest for me is just to realizing I'm not the Holy Spirit. I, I, I have to be obedient and then let it go. And I, I can't be worried about, did I do that okay? Um, how did that come across? Um, especially if I gave a devotional or something, it, it can't be about me. It cannot be about me. It has to be mm-hmm. about them, listening to them, um, loving on them and not taking anything personal because the mm. enemy doesn't want you to meet and you text everyone. Do y'all want to meet? And you may get one response and you get, may get one lady that doesn't respond at all for three weeks. And you think, oh, well, they just don't want to do this. Well, that's not true. We all go through our things and you cannot take it personally. If you're going to be a leader, you need to lead the way the Lord guides you and not take anything personal because we really have to get um, our value from God and not from me, not from each other. Of course, um, my prayer partners, I, we love each other to death, but there has been times when I thought, do they really like me? Because the enemy gets in there and, and, and does that to you. It's like a family. You know, when you first get married to your husband, um, you just love their family. And then you think these people are kind of weird. <laughs> and then you think, you know what? I love these people, their family, because my family's weird. Your family's weird. All families are weird. So when you start becoming a family, you see the weirdness and then you just know them and then you really love them. And that happens in a prayer group. It's a process of becoming a family. And so, uh, so that's, that's a hard thing to, um, it's, it's hard, but it's important to recognize that it is a process and it takes years. You know, it takes years, it takes commitment and it takes years. To that is uh, in that way my prayer yes. my my main prayer group we don't meet every week anymore um it's tw- a couple times a month but we are sisters we are soul sisters for life and so but but it was years that we did meet every week every week every week and that is what really what bonded us and now we're just we're, we're bonded we're there so. That is good, you know, and I think that's so rare in our society today, having women that are long haul sisters like that. And that's mm-hmm. so profound what you said about what it takes to really, you know, you love people and that goes for relationships, just being friends um, mm-hmm. romantically. Oh, we're in the honeymoon period. Oh, they're so wonderful and so great. And then you get to know them a little while. Oh, <laughs> they got issues. They're weird. They got, I don't know if I like that. That kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Mm. And in the end, that's when the enemy gets in. That's in any type of community or group over time. And then a lot of times people, all all of a sudden, I feel led to leave. All of a sudden, everybody start feeling led. (laughs) Am I telling not the truth? Am I not telling? I feel led. You know, I think that's what, what works in our group is that we really are centered around prayer. It's hard to be uh, offended by someone who's praying for your, for your baby. It's hard to be offended when someone is crying as they're praying for, you know, whatever the case may be. And, and so it's, it's more of a prayer group and more centered around God's love. Cause when we love with God's love, all that petty foolishness goes away you're absolutely right like she hurt my feelings then the same woman who hurt your feelings you put in your prayer request and she prays down heaven and 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 kicks the devil's Mm -hmm. butt for you and you up here being petty all that it goes away it goes out the window Uh, right and and you have to hear it. it it's so important you hear them praying for you and so because of covid and whatnot we now meet on zoom which is easier one of us moved away and so we meet on zoom but even then we pray out loud. We pray for each other. We don't just take prayer requests. Now, even in text, we have group texts, you know, Johnny's having a, inter- none of our kids are named Johnny, but Johnny's having an interview, prayers interview go well, and someone may type out a text and that's great. You know, amen, we'll say amen and all those things. Um, but um, I think it's important to keep the bond. You hear each other pray for each other. And yeah, so um, that is that's, so a, that's important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, thinking out, so we talked about leading like a small group and small uh, women's ministry. Now, moving into the business side in terms of your coaching business, knowing what you know now, 
Is there anything differently that you would have done in terms of starting your coaching business or just this whole journey of how you started? You went to, you know, you had the Facebook page and then God was taking at your heart and you went and got your certification and now we're watching you in this process. Is there anything, knowing all what you know now that you would do differently? I don't think I'm far enough in the process to say I would do anything differently um, because I feel like I feel very called to life coaching. Um, when I was called to it, I didn't even know life coaching existed. Let me tell you, I've been in a class in a Christian school classroom bu bu bubble and in my kids activities, I didn't even know life coaching existed. And I heard a speaker at a, a teacher conference talk about this life coaching. And I've I'd been feeling like God was going to call me to something different. Long story short, got home, Google Life Coaching, started researching Yes, there is Christian Life Coaching. And one of my prayer partners that moved away called me and she said, hey, when are you going to retire? And I laughed. I said, at a Christian school there, you know, we don't have retirement. We laughed. And, and I said, hey, but I didn't tell you, I feel like God's calling me out of the costume to life coach. And she flipped out. Long story short, she had woke up that morning with the word life coach on her brain. Now she knew about life coaching. She was a friend that's a life coach. She said, I woke up and heard the word life coach over and over. And I said, Lord, I'm, I just started an insurance business. I'm, I don't want to be a life coach. And your name popped in my head. And I said, of course, Lindy, that's perfect. She said, that's why I'm calling you to tell you, you need to be a life coach. And I already had the school pulled up and I've been saying, Lord, if you want me to do this, bring me the right school because it needed to be certified. I wanted to be as legit as humanly possible, but with a Christian bent. She had my school pulled up, which is the one I signed up for a week later. And so when times got tough over the last two and a half years, as I was building my website by myself and learning all these skills that, and working towards my certification, coaching for that. And I had any doubt, I just thought of that conversation and there's no turning back. God called me to this. He called me to teach the mamas to pray. He called me to help women in their journey, not only in, in their spiritual growth, but we get so busy with kids that we don't take care of ourselves. We don't take care of our dreams. We turn around, our kids leave the house and we think, I don't even know what I like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have this dream, but it's, I had that dream when I was 30. I think I'm too old now. Well, that's not true, but I don't want women to wait until their kids graduate to start their dreams. That, that's, that's not okay. It's not okay with God. It's not okay with me. And so if I can help even one woman get closer to Jesus so he can be part of her journey yes, and give her a purpose. I, you know, I started my women's group when my youngest was still at home. Yeah. And she was so proud of me. I was stepping into my purpose there. Then I started my videos when she was still home, her last couple of years of high school. And just to see how proud that she was of me. Oh, that, that was huge. That was yes. huge. And yes. um, so, so mamas need to know it actually does their kids a service if they will pick up that torch and, and make a goal and accomplish it. And I don't even care what the goal is, mm -hmm. but a goal that's on their heart. They feel like God told them to do. It can be little, it can be private. It can be public, whatever that is. Jesus wants to help them. And so, so really that's my passion is, I is love helping that. women. Yeah. I love that. And I love what you said about the importance of letting your children see you pursue your dreams and your goals and your God-given passions. That's mm -hmm. true. It sets an example. It shows them what's possible. Mama has a life. Mama is doing something. Mama's not fretting and, and running behind me. Mama's doing something. And if she can, I can too. Exactly. Exactly. Come on. Come on. Exactly. So good. Now that doesn't mean we, we sacrifice anything. I went to every ball game. I went to every, <laughs> everything my kids did. It doesn't mean we sacrifice that. And maybe, or maybe it does. Maybe it, maybe it means that in a certain case, you don't go to the, to the mm -hmm. practice where, you know, but, um, but each situation is different. And so I've really enjoyed walking, walking with the women that I have coached and seeing the breakthroughs that they've experienced and just the joy of um, consistently being in the word 
and then accomplishing some things that started and stopped um, and really prayer and and we just haven't been taught we've been taught god cares about the little things but we haven't been taught how to include him in the little things Break it he, down. he cares about everything he cares that we're obedient in the little things we've been called to do but we don't we don't invite him in when we're doing it we pray in the morning give me strength for my day help me to be successful and on we go and then we have a temptation and we justify it and and get you know i had so much grace on myself no <laughs> well you know we can have so much grace over ourselves we get nothing done because it's okay mm. you know be nice to yourself so um so you be not one one way of loving yourself is doing what's right see you know, I'm listening for your sound bite. <laughs> I'm just like, let her just drop this mic quietly. Let me just listen to what she's saying. <laughs> I love everything you're saying. Thank it's like we, we, you said, what did you, you said, we know that God cares about the little things, but we don't invite him in the little things. And now are we kind to ourselves. It, you you just you preach to you you preach whole entire words and it's just flying it just comes out just comes out but i tell you what this has been a blast i didn't know what i was going to say but you know when you tell your own story um the holy spirit just speaks to you and and i'm just honored and blessed i'm honored and blessed for anyone who's listening to this if i've helped them even in a little way if i've helped them encourage them to pray for their babies, it's gonna be okay. You don't have to fear. Mm. Read Psalm 91 till you till you trust the Lord more than you trust your fear. That is so important. In Psalm 91, it says all the things that could possibly go wrong. If we love the Lord, He protects us from all of them. So um, I love it. Amen. I'm you, now you got me, girl. You get ready to go and start reading Psalm 91 because my Psalm fear 91. that I have had to fight has been my driving with my youngest son COVID got behind, got everybody behind and the school system behind on driver's ed so he's a little mm -hmm. bit older and still need to get his license he has the permit right but my nerves had got shot a little bit <laughs> and i need to really really go back on that psalm 91 but that, read that's the part just... about the angels read the part about the angels yes, <laughs> yes. so going back and looking at the business again so can you share briefly with the listeners any like emotional triggers or things that sort of came up with you? you I mean, you knew you have a powerful testimony and a confirmation mm -hmm. about getting that sort of certification. And so you knew, you knew, you knew in your heart of hearts, okay, I am called to be a life coach. This is the, the next dimension. But what other emotions came up outside of fear, which I'm sure you probably had some kind of a fear, but any other stuff come up where you like, Okay, I'm gonna be no, woman. absolutely. So, and and I think we talked about this in in our clubhouse room today. Um, I was producing fruit on it, and that took bravery to make uh, videos online. It took bravery to have a women's group, and I was producing fruit. But boy, when he called me to life coaching, it was a new set of skills. I'm, I'm, I can teach. I can teach. But coaching isn't teaching. Coaching is listening and asking powerful questions to help someone find their, find, be led by the Holy Spirit themselves. Not what the Holy Spirit would tell Lindy, what the Holy Spirit would tell Tanika and how she can move forward. And those powerful questions, I am just in love with the coaching process that, that helps women um, really sit and process for themselves what is important. Because really, you are, you're the expert on your life. I could give you, I could give you the advice to get up at 4 a.m. and spend an hour doing this and this, this, but I don't know if you have to stay up till 11 to do this. You are the expert in your life. Mm -hmm. And so um, you said any triggers. You know what the biggest one was? It was transitioning to coaching a little bit because that's a new skill set, going back to school, writing papers, you know, that there was a little, I had fun, but there was a little fear there. But building a website, I felt like God had, I, this is what I felt like. I felt like God had hired me into the family business. And then he put me back in a corner, like back office by myself for a whole year saying, okay, build that website. I had no idea what to do. I mean, I was praying and, and, and helping, but 
that was something else I did, you know, and so I'm so proud. I now I can tweak it myself. If I would have hired someone to do it, I'd have to ask them, change this, change that. And I go in and tweak it, you know, all the time. And so, um, so I'm really proud. I have that skill now. I don't want to become a website builder. Um, but I think what, what happened is in the process of having so much time building my website, I was also listening to business podcasts. Um, I was listening to coaching podcasts. I was honing my coaching skills with the women I was coaching that I knew, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't strangers. And so really my confidence grew. My con mm. God was molding and shaping me. And, and I thought it was because, you know, I was taking so long on the website, but really there were so many other things going on, making me a business woman and transitioning from teacher, elementary teacher to businesswoman. And, and that's a, you know, that's a, a stretch after teaching and being in the classroom so long is, um, uh, no, I know, I know some things and, and it's good. So, so God is real gracious in that, that, um, mm. That's but that, that that was emotional. There were days like, is this ever going to happen? Because I'm, and then someone told me, well, you have to check it on your on your cell phone to make sure it looks right, and it didn't, and I had to figure out why. And <laughs> so I could do a whole podcast. One day I said, "Hey, mom, look, I can change this color." She's all nice. No, you don't understand. I can change that color. Anyway, it was oh, a thing. Oh my goodness. And it, yeah, it sounds like you really went through, like you were <laughs> really <laughs> tribulated with that website. But you brought an interesting point about that transition from teaching to coaching. Like mm -hmm. you, you could probably teach all day long, 24 seven, because that's what you've been doing for 20 something years. Mm -hmm. But to make that transition to coach or teaching, you're getting up just telling and talking and explaining concepts and things like that. But coaching, you're pulling it out of that person and asking the powerful questions so that they can draw their conclusions as you're partnering with the Holy Spirit and teaching them. Like you can hear the Holy Spirit too and answer these questions for your life. Mm -hmm. That's a whole big different kind of a shift. I'm sure that was a little bit of a, a kind of a leap. And you put it, having to put on your business hat and a website hat. Oh yeah, that's a bit much. <laughs> that was a bit much. The coaching actually has been helpful in school. I've used some coaching uh, questions with some students. I had one boy recently, I went through some coaching questions and, and uh, by the end of the conversation, he says, well, I learned today, blah, blah, blah. Well, he learned it from himself because I didn't tell him any wisdom. So that, that was really neat to see. So um so That's coaching cool. works on kids too a little bit. So and that, the so other thing good. is that I, you know, you have to watch out for, which I caught myself doing one time, like slow key coaching my children or like trying to low key coach a friend. Like you're coaching, you're asking questions, you're you can't you can't be doing that. My husband. <laughs> have you yeah, tried to coach? Me. My husband caught me. Yeah, I had to quit coaching my husband. <laughs> but uh I don't think my friends and, and kids have caught on yet, but I Yes. And then we talked about uh, coaching our family and our friends and our kids and trying to low key coach your husband on the down low. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how, how did that go? <laughs> well, he tells me, I feel like you're always trying to teach me something. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. No worries. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's just, I guess, you know, part of the journey that we go through in adjusting and kind of navigating these different places as God is leading us in our journeys. And so we're going to wrap this up and, you know, I have a few more questions and it's one that I always ask, but if you could go back and give 18 year old Lindy advice, what would you tell her? I would tell her, start praying and reading your Bible now. Take God's, don't take God's word for granted. Mm. I would say love, really love God with all your heart and love others as yourself. That's what I would tell her. And uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the most important thing. Start reading your Bible and learning how to pray now more than the Sunday school prayer. More than the Sunday school prayer. And there's other things I would say to her that I know that that is coming up in her life that not to don't listen to that boy and don't, you know, do this and that. <laughs> so Don't listen. <laughs> what? You would tell her to avoid certain things. A lot I would tell her that I'm not going to share right now, but. Give us one more. 
I would say, I would say study more than you dance. That's what I would tell her. <laughs> So she had a, she danced more than she studied. Oh, I tell you what, I love to jitterbug. Just, just saying, I, even today, I just love to jitterbug. And so those were some, those were some fun and joyous times. But, um, but yeah, you know, I, I would take, I always took school seriously. Um, but I, I think, I think if I would have read the Bible more, the seriousness would have had a sad tint to it. You know, it, it seemed like striving. I have to do good on this test. I have to you know, the things I was taking seriously, they were serious. They didn't have to be serious. You know, I could have done well and it not be so heavy. And I think mm. when we, when we have the spirit of the Lord, one of the fruits of the spirit is joy. And, and, uh, I needed more joy in my life. And I, I, mm. now I have that joy because I have, you know, more of the Holy spirit in me. And, and that fruit has come, come to life because I spend so much time with Jesus. And that's one of the fruits is joy. And I wish I would have had that younger in my life. So that's Amen. why I would say uh, be in the word more. So, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And so, as you know, this is the Well-Centered Woman podcast. And centered means to be balanced at peace, emotional and spiritual equilibrium. And I know you pray and I know you journal. We, we, we got that very well established, but what else do you do? What else really helps keep, helps to keep you centered and sane as you navigate business, being a wife and a mom and all of that? Those probably, that's probably just it, right? Is there anything else? Well, I do. I have been focusing uh, recently on my physical body, keeping mm. stretched out and um, eating right cutting out sugars and, and just taking care of my body more, but, um, making sure I keep uh, Sunday, Sunday and, um, rest. Mm. I don't, I don't get on social media and look at the posts I just posted. Um, I don't, my husband is good at that. He leaves work at the office. And when you work a lot from home, um, it's easy to let that bleed over into his time. And so at a certain time in the evening, I, I cut off anything business. And on Sunday, I, I cut off anything business. Now, I may do some housework and that sort of thing. I'm not, I'm not real strict on don't work, but I don't work on what I work on during the week. And uh, so that's, that's what I've been trying to do. And I still have a book going. I, I love to read. The Audible is so much faster. And so I, I, have a, I usually have a, a fiction in a fiction book going on audible that I'll, I'll listen to at certain times of the day, which just, it just helps, um, helps my heart a little bit. So. That is good. That is good. So what I'm hearing is that you really try to honor the Sabbath, that you really try to make Sunday a rest day. And I, I, I really try to do that too. It's like, I don't want to do social media. I may scroll and be on it a little, but I'm not going to be like posting you know, I'm not going to be, I just want to eat, go to church, get my church nap in. Exactly. And I want to like study and read. I, I want to just have that time to really get, it, you know, what I want to do. And I, you're, that's so on it and so true about our bodies, our bodies. Yeah. yeah. Taking care of that body temple. So you, you do your journaling. Mm -hmm which is big. So how many journals do you have? How many <laughs> I'd, have you to count. I'd have to count. It used to be about one a year. Um, in the last year, I'd be honest, I go through a journal probably every three months. Yeah. And so, um, and then I have then you know, you, your wisdom gets lost. So then I have a journal for this and then I have a journal for that. And yeah. 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 So I can see some books coming up out of you as well. Well, there is that. I, mm -hmm. Yes, I'm, I'm writing. I'm, yes, <laughs> there yeah. will be. I'm yeah. not sure when that will happen, but as soon as I get my coaching, you know, my coaching where it's it's easy, you know, is, as far as scheduling and doing all the things I, I need to be doing, um, I'm sure that God's going to bring that up. He has put that on my heart. So Yeah. And that yeah. and speaking, he's, he's put on my heart speaking too. So by the time this airs, I'll have my first public address under my belt. So um, <laughs> my eighth grade friends have voted me to uh, give their eighth grade address at their graduation. So in a week or so, I'll be um, 
I'll be given a speech. So I'm I'm really awesome. excited about that. I'm, that is I'm really so good. Excited. That is awesome. And one other thing before I ask you to tell tell the listeners where they can find you and connect with you at. You know, I know you said you had a goal to have 500 prayer circles. That's a very, what we call big, carry audacious goal, as well as I see that you have a partnership with Turning Point, which yeah. assists and supports mothers who have had unplanned pregnancies. Can you just share more about these endeavors and just, you know, like, how are you partnering? This is a, this a, you got a lot going on that you're like, percolating here it's more to you than meets the eye oh well thank you for that yes yeah, so so actually the uh turning point that came about just with my my desire to help young mothers and this is a way i can do it um if i could have had coaching when i was their age and a young mom that would have been awesome but i know um an unplugged preg pregnancy can use uh, it's an upheaval in any young parent uh they don't have money for for coaching and Turning Point gives them a lot of skills that they need as far as parenting. There's parenting classes and there's all kinds of classes for them. But that next step, what do they do now with their life? Um, they don't have coaching. And uh, the, the lady in our town that runs Turning Point, she is a coach herself, but doesn't have time to coach. And so we have part partnered up and um, anyone who donates uh, to Turning Point in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and tags it coaching um they'll contact me and that will pay for coaching for one of the mothers that they identify that is ready to really um dig her teeth in and um and make good use out of coaching so that's how i that's how i partner with turning point so um yeah and then in yeah. the the prayer circles um yes that is my dream that's my god goal is um before 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 i go to heaven that i have uh, initiated or inspired uh, 500 women to to be in prayer, 500 prayer circles around the country, around the world, really, because mamas need to pray for their babies for the next generation. It's just so powerful. Can you imagine? Can you imagine mm -hmm. that? Well, 500, you know, times five or six, that's a lot of, and then multiply that by several children. How many children's lives could be changed? If there were 500 prayer circles in our country praying for their for their teenagers, for their little ones. Um, mm -hmm. So mamas the prayers of mamas have been much, yeah. Yeah, mamas so. praying for their babies. So that means, yeah, that means you're really going to be strengthening your model, how you lead and replicate yourself to have these groups. And, and I'll say mm. to your, I'll say to your, uh, to your listening audience, if there's any woman out there that that has a group of friends and they would like to form a prayer circle because they're listening to this podcast, um, reach out to me and I will make it well worth their while. I won't charge a lot. I'm going to charge a little. And this is why I would charge for that. When someone is charged for something, they take it more seriously. Mm -hmm. And so it's doing a disservice um, to do it for free because it's easy to blow off. And it, it is a commitment. So on my prayer circle um, programs, it's a low low cost and high commitment where in coaching mm -hmm. it's a little more expensive but the commitment isn't there as much if they don't want it to be they pay me for my time and then it's up to, to them to carry through but in, in the prayer circles so anyone out there that's wanting to start one i would love 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 to partner with you in in doing that and get you on the right track and uh, set you on your way Amen. And with that said, can you share with the listeners how they can get in contact with you? Um, what other initiatives you had? We just talked about a couple of them, but how can they get in contact with you? And what are you are offering right now? In terms okay, of right now, I'm just offering the one one on one coaching and any prayer groups that want to start a prayer, prayer circle, I will help them do that. Um, just you can find me on lindygardner.com. And you can also find me on Facebook. Um, I think if you, Lindy Gardner, you can find me there. Lindy's Christian Coaching is how you'll find me on, on Instagram and actually on Facebook too. So you can DM me, email me. I think my phone, my phone number is even on my website and I answer phone calls. And I'll tell you why I do that. Have you heard of Bob Goff's book, um, Love Does? Mm -mm. Mm. Awesome book. But at the end of Bob's book, he puts his phone number. And I thought, well, I'll see if he'll answer. And the second time I tried, he answered and he answered some questions. And I was so honored. And 
And I said, you know what? I will be available. If anyone wants to ever call me, I will I will be available. So my phone number is on my website. Give me a call and I'd love to visit with you. That is so awesome. Well, guys, you've heard that. Lindy Gardner, it's been a joy to interview you and you dropped a lot of wisdom. So it's going to be difficult for me to kind of go through this and like, gosh, you know, what do I, what nugget am I going to share on Instagram? Because there's a <laughs> lot in this. <laughs> you are so sweet. Thank you so much for the opportunity just to share my passion and what I'm doing. And, and I just love your podcast and you're an inspiration to me to, to be bold in my faith and to speak out. So I'm really proud of you too. So thank you thank so much. You. It's been a thank joy. You. Yes. Blessings to you.